As the film begins, we see Joe himself struggling with a plastic bag while counting backwards from 50. He then proceeds to burn a picture and clean a hammer that has blood on it. He continues to clean the motel room, removing all evidence of him being there, and throws away a bag full of clean stuff in the trash. He walks out of the motel through the back stairs. While he is walking in a dark alley, a guy tries to attack him, but he easily gets tackled with a headbutt. After that, Joey calmly walks out. He takes a cab to the airport where he uses a payphone to call a guy named John McCleary to inform him that the job is done. He takes another cab to reach a dark street where the neighborhood kid is watching him. He stares at him until the kid looks away before entering his house. Upon getting inside, he greets his mother, but she doesn't respond and it seems that she has fallen asleep on the couch. But when Joe tries to remove her glasses, she wakes up laughing, indicating that she pranked him. They talk about the TV show she has been watching and she tells him how scary it is. Joe takes his mother to her bedroom and tucks her in, but she asks him to stay for a while as she is afraid of the TV show she's been watching. He obliges. Joe later showers and reads a book in his room when he starts having really weird flashbacks. Joe is playing with a knife in his room when his mother calls him as she has poured water all over the bathroom and needs his help. He sends his mother downstairs while he proceeds to clean the bathroom floor. Later, he goes to a store where he sees the same kid who was watching him last night. He then meets the store owner, Angel, the middleman between Joe and the handler, who was also the kid's father. Angel takes out an envelope from the ceiling and gives it to Joe. He informs Joe that the man wants to meet him in person. The envelope contains money in it. Joe gives some of it to Angel and asks him if his son told him anything about their brief encounter last night. Angel explains that his son is just a stupid kid, but Joe hands him some more money and says that they are now done cutting ties with him. He leaves the store and goes back home where he helps his mother clean dishes, humming an alphabetical song. He cleans the refrigerator, throwing out everything rotten. His mother then asks him about a woman he dated around 20 years ago, Janice. She says that Janice would have been a good mom. Joe is seen again with a plastic bag while having some flashbacks of his childhood where he used to do the same. In the next scene, Joe is seen standing at a railway station looking down at the train tracks while a woman watches him. He then goes into a building and meets a guy named John McCleary, who is the handler. They talk about the flowers sent by some clients. Joe tells him to remove Angel's contact and assures that he'll find a new guy. McCleary agrees. Joe lays down on the couch, asking the reason for being called. McCleary informs him about his new task to recover the daughter of State Senator Albert Votto as she has gone missing. Votto doesn't want to involve the authorities as he is working with Governor Williams. The senator is willing to pay $50,000 for the task. Joe then meets with Senator Votto to discuss more details. He tells him his daughter's name is Nina and provides him with a specific address where the assumed abduction has taken place as the location is known to house traffic girls. They decide to meet at a location after Joe has rescued Nina. Joe then rents a car and gathers the supplies for his plan, all the while having constant flashbacks of the past. On the street, Joe is stopped by some girls and they ask him to take their pictures. But while Joe is taking their pictures, his flashbacks get stronger and he starts to lose his mind. He then goes to get some medicine from a man whom he punches for being late. He goes back to the car, arranging his supplies before visiting Asana, a place where he takes a steam bath with a towel on his face as he gets more flashbacks about a kid who was shot in the desert. Afterwards, he stands in front of the mirror, singing the same song that he sang with his mother to calm himself down. Finally, he goes out to the location where Nina might be found. He stays in his car while listening to the news when he sees a guy walking in and out of the building. He abducts him and takes him to the car for interrogation. The guy informs him about the safe code, the security, and the place where Nita is kept. Joe enters the building, using his hammer to get rid of anyone who comes in his way. He manages to find Nina and puts her on his shoulders. He walks out of the building while ending all the molesters he could find. He sits Nina in the car and goes to a parking location. He asks her if she is thirsty, and the poor girl hugs him in return. He informs her that he is taking her to her dad. 
They go to a hotel room, and after getting cleaned up, they are watching the news on TV. They find out that Votto has made a terrible decision by jumping off a building. Joe cups Nina's face with both hands and assures her that everything will be all right. Suddenly, there is a knock on the door. Joe opens to see the hotel manager standing outside, whose head blows up instantly. Joe stands there, frozen, and watches as the two guys wearing police uniforms enter the room. One of them picks up Nina and takes her away. Nina cries for Joe to help her. The other man points a gun at Joe, and before he could pull the trigger, Joe snaps out of it. A struggle ensues between the two before Joe manages to knock the guy out. Joe escapes the building and is seen taking a bullet out of his jaw with tweezers. He uses alcohol to sterilize the wound and goes to the nearest phone booth to call John, but no one answers. He takes a cab and reaches John's house, which seems empty. A pot has been on the stove for a while. He finds a revolver in his bedroom and keeps it. He then takes John's car and goes to his office only to find him deceased. His condition indicates that he had been tortured before being killed. Joe calls Angel through John's phone, and we are shown that Angel and his son are also at gunpoint. Joe gets out and starts driving while having more disturbing flashbacks from his childhood. After a while, Joe goes to his house and senses something is wrong, so he enters through a window silently. He finds his mother on the bed with a pillow above her head. A bullet hole is visible on the pillow. He takes the pillow away and removes the bloody glasses from her face. He hears someone downstairs and sneaks on them holding the revolver. He gets more flashbacks but manages to ignore them as he shoots at the two trespassers. One dies on the spot while the other keeps crawling on the floor. Joe interrogates him while hitting him in the area where he got shot. He asks the man why they killed his mother while giving him some painkillers. He tells Joe about Governor Williams, who likes underage girls, and Nina is his favorite. They were sent to get her back. He asks if they killed Senator Votto as well, and the man replies that Votto wanted out. Apparently, Votto also conspired with Governor Williams. Joe then asks him if his mother was scared before dying, and the guy tells him that she was asleep. Joe then cleans himself and his mother. He starts driving in his car with his mother tied neatly in a plastic bag in the back seat. He drives to the woods, goes out, and puts some rocks in his coat. He holds his mother in his arms and walks towards the lake. As Joe and his mother get deeper into the water, he is reminded of Nina through her vision. He immediately throws all the stones out and swims to the shore, determined to save her. He got on the bus and couldn't stop thinking about what might be happening to Nina. He puts the pieces together that Votto and Williams were both involved in a prostitution racket and that Votto sold his own daughter to Williams to get into his good books. However, the guilt got to him and for that he jumped off as the news reported. Joe starts following Williams and manages to get to his house. We then meet with Williams who has a lot of pictures of young girls and a dollhouse. Joe is seen holding the hammer in his hand while entering the house. As he starts his search for Nina, he soon enters a room with a pink and bright setting, as if it were made for kids. He sees Williams on the floor while the song, My Angel Baby, plays in the background. Joe sits on the bed and starts having a mental breakdown. He removes his shirt while saying that he is weak. He walks through the house and finds Nina sitting on the dining table eating peas with her bloodied hands. A razor lies beside her plate. Joe sits beside Nina on the floor, and Nina assures him that it's fine now. They both drive off in the car. Then we see them sitting at a restaurant. Nina asks Joe where they will go now and what they will do. Joe replies that they will do whatever she wants. Nina gets up to go to the bathroom while Joe stays in his seat, staring blankly into the distance as the voices in his head keep overlapping. Just then, Joe drops on the table after a gunshot is heard, and the blood splatters all over the place while no one cares. He gave it up after all. When Nina comes back and wakes Joe up, it is revealed that Joe isn't dead. What happened is just a dream, and he is only resting his head on the table. Nina tells that they should go because it's a beautiful day, and he follows. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.